Hey folks, Tim Miller here, and I don't have to tell you, things are becoming more violent all around us. Look at what's happening in cities. And, and the focus is I want you not to be the person that is afraid or fearful or the victim. I want you to be the person that's prepared. Let's take a look at this media, one. We have to warn you, it is disturbing. Police say the suspect had a brief conversation with a 45-year-old in Melrose on 152nd Street. When she walked away, he followed her. Police say he then used his belt as a lasso. He threw it around her neck. The victim fell backwards, slammed her head on the ground, and blacked out. Police say the man then dragged her with a belt around her neck down the street and between two parked cars before sexually assault. Folks, I got to tell you, this makes my blood boil. And it makes my blood boil for a number of reasons, primarily because it used to be in this country that law enforcement and the courts protected the victims, not supported the thugs. This stuff is happening every day all across our country. And I got to tell you, it fires me up because nobody, nobody should have to live in fear and nobody should fear that while they're walking down a city street that somebody's going to attack them and assault them. Welcome to the new America. Now, with that said, for any of you all that know me, I'm all about wisdom and preparation, not fear. And I just want to plant three things in your mind about how you can be safer, but it all starts here. It all starts here. I recently saw a guy on YouTube, and, and folks, please be careful who you listen to on YouTube. Uh, this guy is some martial arts expert, whatever, and he was actually mocking the importance of situational awareness. Now, that would all be great if he's so smart because you learn as a Secret Service agent, you learn in the military, you learn in real professions. Situational awareness is probably the most important thing that you can have because if you can see it, you can plan for it, you can aggressively stop it. And so I want to plant three things into your mind. I, I, I want to plant uh, first and foremost that you are alert wherever you go. And folks, I, you know, it used to be you didn't have to think about that. You do now. You have to think about it in small towns. You have to think about it in big towns. But alert. What are you talking about alert? I'm talking about a mental mindset that is scanning, not paranoia, preparedness. You're scanning. You're not on this thing. You're not head down. You're not engulfed, engaged in conversation. When you're out, you're scanning. What are you scanning for? You're training your mind to see things that just don't look right. In this case, the lady saw this guy. She had a conversation. Love to know what that was about. But then she blindly walked down the street as he was pulling a belt out and getting ready to choke her from behind. So the first thing, alert. Well, Tim, how do you know if someone's coming up behind you? I want to give you a clue. You know how you can be alert even for things that are behind you? Simply turn your head to the right or to the left. God gave you a perfect tool called peripheral vision. You can see things. And if you see someone moving up quickly, then you got a problem. So we're scanning. We're looking for the things that don't look right. Once we see that, then we move from alert into aware. Okay, aware is narrowing it down. What's that person doing? We're aware of their movements. We're aware of their body language. We're aware of their behavior. So we're alert scanning. Now we see it. And now we're alert. And then we move into the, and just remember, awareness means that you have a mental plan that identifies before this is needed, what kinds of response you're going to train yourself to. And, and I know, you know, I know um, some of my audience are older and they're like, Tim, we, we don't have the ability to fight. Well, here's some good news. Yes, you do. Number one, you never, ever, ever say we can't because you'll be right. We can't. You're right. If you say, I can, maybe I do things differently. That's where my buddy Matt Pasquilini comes in for older folks. A cane can be an effective tool because guess what? Bad guys misunderstand. They, they don't think you're any threat. And so, again, so we're alert. Um, 
and then we're aware and then we're into what what I call is a an aggressive posture, alert, aware, aggressive. And that aggressive posture is you're preparing your mind and body for a conflict. In this case, think about it. If she turned around and seen him walking quickly towards her with a belt, you, you could figure out pretty quickly, hey, this guy's trying to hurt me. And that's, folks, you know, one of the things uh, we train is, is personal defense. And it is amazing how many people were taught in school, well, you know, be good. Don't hit anybody. Don't get in fights. Guess what? Those thugs don't think like that. They're thinking how they're going to hurt you. And so when you go from uh, alert to aware, now you got to go to aggressive. And a lot of folks ask me, what does that mean? And I'm going to say, what are you willing to invest time and training into? Uh, we train a lot of organizations, churches, uh, nonprofits, a lot of folks. The common question is, well, I don't want to carry a gun. So what should I have? Well, that's up to you. I will tell you this. You better have something today. Because at the end of the day, when that guy comes, you better have a plan. You have quarter seconds to decide what you're going to do. So alert, aware, and now we're aggressive. Now it's our ball game. We will not be the victim. We will be the victor. And folks, you know, it, it's interesting. <laughs> when I was in the Marine Corps, um, being defeated wasn't an option. That wasn't even in your mindset. It was, you know, we're going to win. That's our mindset. And when I was in the Secret Service, it was, we're going to win. I don't care if I'm shot. I don't care what it is. But guess what? That needs to be your mindset, too. Because today, things are changing quickly. People are being ambushed. And I just got to tell you, as, as I think of kind of what's going on, it, it's everything from the criminal. And, and I'll will play this sneak attacks these two men are getting away with cash and valuables take a closer look you can see one man runs up behind a victim puts him in a chokehold then once on the ground a second man jumps in the two then rummage through the victim's pockets before taking off police say in a matter of seconds these two men are wreaking havoc here in bushwick when we showed the video to people walking by it's just impossible to be outside alone either you have to have these we with family or a friend at least. Police say it is a good idea to never walk alone at night. From November to just last week, the men have randomly targeted eight people walking alone on several streets in Bushwick. In all of the incidents, a chokehold was used to get the victim on the ground. And police say the pair of thieves seem to be getting more aggressive. Did you hear that? Police say the pair of thieves appear to be getting more aggressive. What's more aggressive? They're already trying to choke you and steal everything you have. In one case, they assaulted that lady. I'm not sure if it's the same people. Probably not. But the point is, criminals in our country are no longer afraid of being arrested, incarcerated, and punished. They don't care. Which means, folks, that we have to care. Now, I, I do want to stress what the police say, because I totally agree with them. If especially if you're a female, uh, but even a male, we saw the second one, even a male, you should not be walking alone anymore on the streets of our country. I never thought I would say that. Welcome to the new world we live in. And by the way, your vote matters, because if we tolerate this as a nation, if lawlessness is OK, then this is just going to get worse. By the way, I know for a fact that many of the people crossing into our nation from previously, you know, countries that they would have been not admitted are coming out of jails in Venezuela. And I could go down the list. I'm not going to. But here's the reality. These folks are here to target you. They're not here to earn a living. They're, they're here to exploit our way of life, our prosperity and our judicial system, because guess what? In their country, they'd be put to death here. No problem. We'll get you out the same day. You can even attack a police officer, which in their country, I've been there. You would not survive. If you attacked a police officer, they would make sure that you didn't attack another police officer again. So here we are back to the whole situation now with two men, 
jumping a man and they're going for the choke holds. Now, folks, I got to tell you, if someone's restricting your airflow, you have a very short time to reestablish that airflow and then to get back in the game. Because here's the bad news. When you restrict that airflow to your brain, your cognitive ability to think, respond, your body's ability to have uh, oxygen going to the, to the uh, muscles begins to deteriorate. And Houston, you've got a problem. So it's very important that you think about, number one, hey, uh, if I'm going to go walking, maybe I have two or three people. And folks, let, let me just say it. I'm just going to say it. You need to have a security plan where you go. I remember 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you know, I've always been in the security business, so it's been normal for me, but, but people would, you know, remark, oh, that's paranoia, that's fear. And, you know, probably for someone in security um, that, that's trained their mind to do it, you know, you are always expecting stuff. So, but now, now your three A's, alert, aware, and aggressive, those three A's may save your family's life. So I agree you shouldn't be walking on city streets or anywhere by yourself. And I would even take that a little bit farther because remember that these thugs are following people home, waiting till they get to their house and carjacking, robbing, or whatever. So that means that even when you're walking, you're certainly alert. But even when you're driving, what are you talking about there, Tim? We're paying attention to the rearview mirror. If you notice a car following you more than one or two turns, you should make two or three more turns, right turns. Because if they're following you and they begin to make turn after turn after turn, now you've moved from alert to aware, you're watching them, aware of their actions, and now you're getting aggressive. You're calling 911, you're driving to a police station, or, you know, if you're a person that's trained and prepared, um, you may have to use that. You get caught in traffic and, you know, folks jump out of a car and try to car carjack you. Um, now you got a problem. So um, again, these ambushes are becoming a huge problem. We did some training last week with an organization and, and we were talking about the knockout game. That's where thugs come up and hit you where when you, you're not even looking in an attempt to lock, to knock you out. And then they can rob you or do whatever they want to you. So it's huge, huge folks that you are alert, aware, and aggressive, meaning you've got a plan. You're not a victim. You're thinking as that person's coming to you, oh my goodness, I, I got to get it. No, you're thinking, okay, I got a plan and I don't care how old you are or, you know, hopefully we're all working to stay fit, stay in shape, maintain that brain health, uh, train. Please, folks, please, everyone that's here should be training. We recently did a training and we had some some folks in their 60s and 70s. It, it was firearms, medical and uh, situational awareness training. We have a, um, a virtual system that we use to train police officers. And I'll tell you, putting people in a real life situation where they have to navigate that thought process, it's just huge. So alert, aware, and aggressive. Now, let me ask you, do you have those things? Because there are sick people out here too. They don't want to just rob you or assault you. They just want to hurt you because they can. I don't even know how to respond to that. That's just hilarious. Potentially giving someone a skull fracture. It, uh, it's time, folks. It's time. And I hope this channel is sparking you. I hope that the practical guidance I'm giving you, that you don't just say, oh, that's great, Tim. Thank you, which is awesome. I appreciate your encouragement. But I hope you're putting this stuff into practice. The good news is, is the brain is still the best, fastest supercomputer that's ever been made. If you train it, it can do amazing things. But like anything else, we don't train our body. We get lazy. We put on weight and we're complacent. We don't train our brain. We don't see the things that we need to see. We're not prepared. We're not aggressive. So now is the time. Now, let me ask you as we uh, close, because this is huge. Um, I'm not getting out. Uh, the, the channel is definitely not making it out. And so I need your help. If you would 
everybody that watches this video, if you'd like, share, subscribe, and then, you know, folks, share it with the young people in your life. <laughs> share it with your young uh, adult, uh, even teenagers now. They're being assaulted in schools. We need everybody to understand that security is your responsibility. If you're waiting for the police to arrive and save the day, like many of us did for decades in this country, it, those days are gone. Our police are hurting. They're understaffed. They're being criticized at every turn. Now, the ones that aren't doing the right thing need to be held accountable. But folks, let me tell you, we ought to be supporting those that are willing to run into harm's way on behalf of us and risk their life and not go home to their family. So I hope and pray that you're out there, you see a police officer, just walk up to him and say, thank you. Um, I, I recently just bought a cup of coffee for, for an officer and he was like, no, you don't need to do that. I said, no, 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 no. Yes, I do. I am grateful for your sacrifice. And folks, I know what it's like to make that sacrifice. I've been there. But for those of you who, you know, are buying some of the propaganda that all the police are bad, evil, but whatever. And here's the thing. If we all begin to prepare and train, then righteousness rises. And we pray first, then we prepare, and then we train. But let me tell you, the biggest training you can have, and I don't care what the YouTube expert says about oh, situational awareness, you know, I hear that all the time. Well, guess what? If you understood close combat and you talk to anybody in the special operations community in the Secret Service, you're going to learn right up front that situational awareness is what saves your life. And I heard him say, well, we're not in Afghanistan. Well, guess what? There are some places in this country that probably Afghanistan's safer. Welcome to the new U.S. So, folks, I hope and pray, please get behind this. Um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to give you the best I can, and I know many, many, many of you appreciate it. And we're going to start doing some lives because I want to answer questions. But do me a favor, like, share, subscribe, comment. Um, if you have thoughts, I, I know there are police officers and, and military guys out here that you'd like to add in. Hey, this is a collective time for all of us as Americans that believe in our country, believe in freedom, believe in law and order. Folks, we better stand together now. If we don't, we're not going to like how this plays out. I've been in those countries, which is why I'm fired up today. I've seen this kind of garbage going on. I've seen the police uh, part or paid for by the cartels or by other organizations. And I hope and pray that never happens here. So I hope, I hope this is helpful to you. Uh, I know it's a little heavy, but don't be ambushed out here. Do not let that happen. You make sure that you're always alert. You're scanning. You're alert. You're not distracted. You're looking at things that don't look right. Here's the good news. When you train yourself to see them, you will see them. But then when you see them, you're aware. Okay, what is, I'm aware of this person. What are they doing? What's causing me to feel this way? What are their actions? Could they be setting me up or others up? Because remember, it's not just about you. You may save someone else who is clueless. They have no idea. And then finally, we're aggressive. Folks, I, I, I cannot stress enough. It is time for you to be aggressive in defending yourself, your family. Now, I'm not saying be illegal. I'm saying aggressive within the law. Good news is, at least so far in our country, those laws are still in your favor. Every, every state, every, all 50, give you the right to protect yourself under the law with reasonable force when you're confronted by facts that tell you that you're under direct threat of, of death or serious bodily harm. That's deadly force. But you can also protect yourself against physical force as long as the force that you're using in return is reasonable. Now, remember, they don't care. The bad guys don't care. They don't play by any rules. They're just going to do whatever. So you may have to very quickly escalate to a level that you don't ever hope and pray that you'll have to. So I hope this is helpful, folks. I hope this is to the point. I'd love your feedback. And uh, I'll be doing more in the meantime. God bless you. Play, please stay safe out there. And uh, let me know how I can help you. Take care. See you next time.